One of the most frequently asked questions I get is how do I know an ingredient, whether it's an aroma compound, an herb, a spice, or an essential oil, is safe to use in the food and drink you're creating? Now, all the answers are online and I'm gonna show you today. I've done a few safety videos in the past, but this one I'm really gonna be explicit in how you find that information. Now, do note that it can differ by country. So the EU has its own set of guidance and the United States and the FDA, Japan has a list. And when in doubt, if you're in a country that doesn't have a very specific list, you can go to the World Health Organization. I'll show you on that one. They have their JECFA, the Joint Experts Committee on Food Additives. It has a list as well. So it pretty much can cover anybody who works on food and drink in the world. Now, safety is important. Obviously, the goal of food and drinks to have fun, uh, not hurt anybody. So this will be great guidance for anybody making their own drinks. So let's get into it. I'm Darce O'Neill and this is Art of Drink. Now all the resources are online. Uh, as long as you have access to a web browser, you'll be able to figure this out. And I'm gonna go through some examples. So if you're ordering from a company, what's the easiest way to find out that whatever ingredient you're ordering is usable in food and beverage before you actually order it. Um, we're not gonna talk about limits. Uh, that's, I've got separate videos on that and you can check those out, but this one's specifically for identifying compounds and whether they're safe or food approved. So let's get into it. I'm going to show you on the browser here. So I'm going to show you a bunch of different databases. Don't worry about the links or trying to capture the uh, URL. I'll just list them all below for you. But one of the first ones you should check out is the FDA, especially if you're in North, uh, you're in North America. It's got the substances added to food, and this is a pretty comprehensive list. And it's about 80 pages long, so you can kind of either scroll through it or search through it. But if you're in a different part of the world, uh, you might want to go to the FAO, the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations. And they have their JECFA list, the Joint Experts Committee on Food Additives, and it's basically the same thing. You can search by uh, different flavoring names, numbers, etc. Uh, but the FDA is pretty comprehensive and for example, if we were to look for ethyl acetate, the problem with this database is that when you search for ethyl acetate, it's going to come up with anything with ethyl or acetate in the name or anything in the synonym. So you'll have to scroll through this to actually find it. Uh, there are better websites for this or there are better ways to search. But when you click on this, you're going to get you know, one of the things, the important names is the uh, synonyms or other names, because a lot of things go by some old names, some new names, different languages. But the best thing to look for, and we're gonna talk about is the CAS number. And the CAS number is the chemical abstract service, but each number is unique to a specific compound. Numbers don't mean anything, they're just a catalog number but searching by the CAS number is gonna become important. It's the exact way to know what you're ordering is what you're ordering. So you'll see the CAS number listed on almost all sites uh, selling these compounds. Sometimes they don't have it listed, but you can look it up. But uh, in the FDA, you're gonna get like food and additive grass regulations here. You're gonna get your FEMA number, which will become important and you know certain other things. They also have the JECFA flavor number, which kind of syncs these two databases. So number 27, if we go over here and we type in 27, get rid of this and hit search, you're gonna get ethyl acetate right here. And it's gonna come up with similar information. Now, the FDA does have another food additive status list. And this is just uh, a list of all sorts of other things that are not flavorings, so there are some flavorings in this. So you'll find emulsifiers and enzymes and other things you'd use in food, and it'll come up with the regulations. So you'll often see you know, whether it's grass or not, and then the regulation that it applies to. And obviously this is just angelica root. So, uh, it, it's not an extract or an essence, it's just the whole root. So you're gonna find that type of stuff uh, around in this place. So if you're looking for 
uh, an emulsifier, you'll find it in here. Though there are differences worldwide, but uh, then there's this final one called substances prohibited for the use in human food. Uh, it's not that big of a list, though the internet will have you believe it is. Uh, a lot of it's just animal products like cow brain and other stuff. Most of it is high intensity sweeteners or things like cobalt, stuff that you're not gonna use with anyway. But the important ones are, you'll see saffron here. I've done a video on that. And you know, there's a reason this is banned as well as uh, thyrea. And there are a couple other ones, lead obviously. Coumarin. So coumarin here and calamus. So you'll find calamus used in a lot of old bitter recipes. So those are the ones that you do wanna watch out for. Uh, you can't use them because they are prohibited. Now the most important database and I, the one that most people use is going to be the FEMA. FEMA stands for Flavor Extracts Manufacturing Association. They are North American based, but they have an international section as well. But what you really wanna do is go up to this flavor library up here. And if you're looking for something, so for example, ethyl acetate again, when you search, you're gonna end up with the same problem that you had with the FDA database. And that's gonna pull up anything with ethyl or acetate. And you're gonna get these long lists. So what you really wanna do is search by this CAS number. So if you put the CAS number in here, you're going to get the result that you're looking for right here. And when you click on it, you're going to get a little bit of information, kind of the latest bulletin uh, for it. You're gonna get your JECFA summary. You're gonna get a little bit of a flavor profile, aromatic brandy grape, some scientific literature. But if you click on this here, it will take you to the, their PDF. They, it's kind of like a newsletter. And though most of it's chemistry and science, it can give you some additional information on all of this. I won't go into this because today is not about usage levels, but this is where you would find usage levels. So let's do an example of, let's say you're shopping for compounds. Now this is a just a, a supplier. They sell all sorts of stuff for cosmetics and flavors and you know perfumes and stuff. But if you're scrolling through it and you're like, oh, vanilla essence oil or essential oil. Now that may seem like something you can use, but I, you know, having been in the industry or chemistry wise, uh, it doesn't sound right. Essential oil is not something you get from uh, vanilla. But anyway, there's the CAS number there. So what you just want to do is copy it and you can skip the, you just want the number. And you go back to the FEMA database, you can go to flavor library, paste this in and you'll get no results. So that means this specific chemical using this uh, CAS number cannot be used for food. So. Uh, that just makes it pretty simple for that. Now, if you're going back and you're looking for uh, you know, a certain compound, another compound, let's go to aromatic raw materials. And let's say rose oxide. Seems interesting. Doesn't seem like you'd be allowed to use it, but there's only one way to find out. So you scroll down again, you're gonna grab this CAS number you're gonna head over to the flavor library. You're going to paste that in. You're gonna hit search and it shows up. Now it shows up with this name, which is not rose oxide. Uh, obviously this is not a name that the industry is going to you know, use very much, but it is the exact CAS number that you are looking for. And then you get a check for number here as well. So if you wanna go check that out over here, you can. So again, if you're in Europe and you wanna use this, so you'll get it. And in this one, it actually does come up with rose oxide. So as one of the synonyms, 
And so that can be helpful. So not every database is going to have everything, but that CAS number is really important. So if we go back, now sometimes you'll go to a supplier list and you'll see ethyl acetate and you can look it up, but it's, if they don't have the CAS number, which they don't, you can go over to common chemistry and you can type in ethyl acetate. It'll pop up. And then, so you can grab the number here and then just go back to the FEMA website, the flavor library, paste that number in and you'll get ethyl acetate. So you can keep, there are resources. So common chemistry is just kind of the chemical abstract service. So if they don't have a, a, a CAS number, you can request it from your supplier They'll usually provide it for you, but you can also look up CAS numbers for common things that may not be listed. So let's do another one just because the more you do this, the better you're gonna get at it. Now, chamomile ester seems really interesting. You know, people like chamomile, you find it in lots of, you know, chamomile, the floral, you'll find in lots of bitters and recipes. And ester, it sounds like you'd use an ester. But again, you scroll down to the, the bottom here, you're gonna grab the CAS number, you're gonna copy it, head over to the flavor library, paste that in, and it doesn't show up, so you can't use it. Now you can search by name if you kind of think, well, maybe the number's wrong. So you type in, chamomile ester or paste it. Now you're gonna get a whole bunch of things with ester in it. So usually what I do is if I wanna find chamomile, I get rid of ester because there's so many esters and other compounds. Just use the, the search term that's actually, you know, descriptive compared to ester. So chamomile. And what you're gonna get is four chamomiles that you can use. So you're gonna get chamomile oil of the English variety, Hungarian, Roman, and English Roman. So uh, basically you can use extracts or essential oils. You cannot use chamomile ester. Now you can use it for perfuming, you just can't use it in flavors. So again, if we go back and we look for cuminic aldehyde. So, I'm gonna scroll down here, grab the CAS number, pop it into here, and that one is allowed, but you'll see that it's a slightly different name, cuminaldehyde, as opposed to cuminic. So, this is where the problem with naming comes from, where the CAS number is going to save you a lot of searching. If you get the CAS number, it's guaranteed to, be, guaranteed to be a unique compound. So an isolate, uh, and that is what you're looking for. Again, you come down here, you can find, you know, if you're looking for FDA regulations, you're gonna find that here. And you can get the JECFA number. The FEMA number is just the catalog number, but you'll get other uh, information but not a lot of information. Unfortunately, the flavor library here is, most of this is industry related. It's not for little people like you and I. So they only put out a little bit of information. You can look up these uh, safety assessments and uh, if you feel like reading them, pop up with a, a long research paper on associated compounds. Now it's not, easy reading, but if you ever wonder what the level of research goes into as to whether a compound is safe, uh, you can look at these research papers. They're not uh, some random person on the internet ranting about chemicals and food. These are fully referenced. So this has got like three, four, five, six, almost six pages of research references for these types of ingredients. So 
Uh, do keep that in mind if you're interested in that. There's some more literature here. You know, WHO has some safety evaluation as well, which comes from the JECFA stuff. So you can kind of look at that. And again, most of this is targeted at uh, industry, but that's how you're going to find out whether you have or whether you can use a compound. So milk lactone, let's take a look. Now you can search milk lactone. But again, you're going to get a long list of different lactones and stuff. So let's just scroll down and grab that CAS number. Scroll back up here, punch it in. There you go, five and six decanoic acid. And those would be basically the chemical compound. Now, if you wanna go here, you can paste in the number uh, to the Common Chemistry website. You'll get this and you'll get some little bit of information, but you at least take a look at the chemical structure and it has other names and substances. It has milk lactone. So basically that's how you're going to do it. So if you're serious about making beverages, kind of go search through, use that CAS number. Uh, every supplier should be able to supply you with it. If it's not listed on their website, just send them an email. A good supplier will get back to you with that information. Then you can pump, pump it into the flavor ingredient library and you are set. If the comes up in here and it matches your CAS number, you're good to go. So I hope that helps anybody doing any formulation work. I'll see you in the next video.